Franciscan history of beer, beer, ale, wine, Christianity, and monks. The earliest archaeological evidence of wine produced from grapes has been found at sites in Georgia, about 8,000 BC, China, about 7,000 BC, Persia, about 5,000 BC, Greece, about 4,500 BC, and Sicily, about 4,000 BC. Altered consciousness produced by wine has been considered religious since its origin. The ancient Greeks worshipped Dionysius or Bacchus and the ancient Romans continued this cult. Consumption of ritual wine was part of Jewish practice since biblical times and the consumption of bread and wine was inherited by and incorporated into Christianity in the most singular and profound way. Catholics identify seven holy sacraments, baptism, Eucharist, confirmation, reconciliation, extreme unction or the last anointing of the sick, marriage, holy orders. Wine and bread are central to the Eucharist. Jesus is derived from the Latin Jesus, which itself is derived from the Hebrew name Yeshua, in English Joshua. Yeshua is the son of Abraham. Yeshua is the son of David. Yeshua is the son of Holy Miriam, Virgin Mother of God. Centuries later, Yeshua became Jesus and Miriam and Mariam became Mary. In Luke 22, 12, 18, Yeshua offered his blood and his body to his flock in the sacrament of the Holy Mass. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. According to the teachings of the Roman Catholic Church, the change of substance by which the bread and wine offered in the sacrifice of the sacrament of the Eucharist during the Mass become in reality the body and blood of Jesus Christ. This was not symbolic, but real and a mystery of the Church. The reaffirmation of this mystery of the Eucharist was expressed as transubstantiation by the Fourth Council of the Lateran in 1215 during the life of Francis of Assisi himself. The manner in which the change occurs, the Roman Catholic Church teaches, is a mystery. The signs of bread and wine become, in a way surpassing understanding, the body and blood of Christ. Beer is also exalted as a religious substance, though not as profoundly as wine, by Catholic monks notably Franciscans together with Trappists, Benedictines, and others. Both beer and wine have a past that is documented from the Neolithic, and the documentation of beer is earlier than that of wine. Monks cultivated both beer and wine as well as ale. Quite naturally, Beer, Franciscans, and Germany are closely intertwined. The St. Francis and the Americas Project has extensively documented this as part of its visual research expedition to Germany, 
particularly Bavaria. As explained, beer is one of the earliest products of humankind, dating from the Neolithic or New Stone Age, beginning about 12,000 years ago when ground or polished stone weapons and implements prevailed and when farming first appeared. Metal, bronze followed by iron, appeared over thousands of years later about 6,500 years ago, 4,500 BC, marked by developments leading to the Bronze Age and the Iron Age. During the Neolithic, cultural changes included the use of wild and domestic crops and of domesticated animals and the manufacture of pottery and textiles. Words for beer. The word beer comes from Old German and later was imported into the British Isles by Saxons. Other languages have borrowed the word, including French bière and Italian birra. The Nordic languages have ol, related to the English word ale. Spanish, Portuguese, and Catalan have words that evolved from Latin servicia. Fermentation of beer. Cereals undergo spontaneous fermentation due to wild yeasts in the air. Beer-like drinks were developed throughout the world soon after a tribe had domesticated cereal. Evidence of fermentation has been discovered of 13,000-year-old residues of a beer in the Carmel Mountains in Israel. Beer, one of the first known uses of the process of fermentation, was produced about 3,500 BC in Mesopotamia. Chinese villagers brewed fermented alcoholic drinks as far back as 7,000 BC. Beer in culture. In Mesopotamia, early evidence of beer is a 3,900-year-old Sumerian poem honoring Ninkasi, the patron goddess of brewing. It contains the oldest surviving beer recipe describing the production of beer from barley via bread. Approximately 5,000 years ago, workers in the city of Uruk were paid by their employers in beer. Ninkasi, you are the one who pours out the filtered beer of the collector vat. It is like the onrush of Tigris and Euphrates. Beer is mentioned in the epic of Gilgamesh, in which the wild man and Kidu is given beer to drink. He ate until he was full, drank seven pitchers of beer, his heart grew light, his face glowed, and he sang out with joy. The Ebla tablets, discovered in 1974 in Ebla, Syria, show that beer was produced in the city in 2500 BC. Early traces of beer and its brewing have been found in ancient Babylonia. At the time, brewers were women and often also priestesses. Some types of beer were used especially in religious ceremonies. In 2000, 100 BC, the Babylonian king Hammurabi included regulations governing tavern keepers in his law code for the kingdom. Beer was part of the daily diet of Egyptian pharaohs over 5,000 years ago. It was made from baked barley, bread, and was also used 
in religious practices. During the building of the Great Pyramids in Giza, Egypt, each worker got a daily ration of four to five liters of beer, which served as both the nutrition and the refreshment that was key to the pyramid's construction. The Greek writer Sophocles, 450 BC, discussed the concept of moderation when it came to consuming beer and said that the best diet for Greeks consisted of bread, meats, various vegetables, and beer, or zythos as they called it. In Europe, during the Middle Ages, brewers' guilds adopted a patron saint of brewing, such as Arnulf of Metz, about 582 to 640, and Arnulf of Udenburg, about 1040 to 1087. Christian monks built breweries to provide food, drink, and shelter to travelers and pilgrims. Charlemagne, Carlo Magno, Frankish king and ruler of the Holy Roman Empire during the 8th century, considered beer to be an important part of living and is thought to have trained some brewers himself. Beer and wine. Beer was one of the most common drinks during the Middle Ages. It was consumed daily by all social classes in Northern and Eastern Europe, where grape cultivation was difficult. The idea that beer was consumed more commonly than water during the Middle Ages is a myth. Water was cheaper than beer, and towns and villages were built close to sources of fresh water such as rivers, springs, and wells to facilitate easy access to the resource. Even so, beer was one of the most popular drinks in Europe. Nevertheless, beer had a bad reputation among the upper classes. In 1256, the Aldobrandino of Siena described the nature of beer in the following way. But from whichever it is made, whether from oats, barley, or wheat, it harms the head and the stomach. It causes bad breath and ruins the teeth. It fills the stomach with bad fumes. And as a result, anyone who drinks it along with wine becomes drunk quickly. But it does have the property of facilitating urination and makes one's flesh white and smooth. The use of hops in beer was written of in 822 by the Carolingian abbot Adelard of Corby. Flavoring beer with hops was known at least since the 9th century, but was only gradually adopted because of difficulties in establishing the right proportions of ingredients. Beer flavored without it was often spoiled soon after preparation and could not be exported. Hopped beer was perfected in the medieval towns of Bohemia by the 13th century. German towns pioneered a new level of operation with standardized barrel sizes that allowed for large-scale export. Previously, beer had been brewed at home but the production was now successfully replaced by medium-sized operations of about 8 to 10 people. This type of production spread to Holland in the 14th century, and later it reached England by the late 15th century. English ale and beer brewing were carried out separately, no brewer being allowed to produce both. In the eyes of some, Beer was a foreign and inferior product. Note.
In Europe, beer brewing largely remained a home activity in medieval times. By the 14th and 15th centuries, beer making was gradually changing from a family activity to an artisan one, with pubs and monasteries brewing their own beer for mass consumption. In the late Middle Ages, the brewing industry in Northern Europe changed from a small-scale domestic industry to a large-scale export industry. The key innovation was the introduction of hops, which began in Northern Germany in the 13th century. Hops sharply improved both the brewing process and the quality of beer. Other innovations from German lands involve larger kettle sizes and more frequent brewing. Consumption went up while brewing became more concentrated because it was a capital intensive industry. Thus in Hamburg, per capita consumption increased from an average of 300 liters per year in the 15th century to about 700 in the 17th century. The use of hops spread to the Netherlands and then to England. In 15th century England, an unhopped beer would have been known as an ale, while the use of hops would make it a beer. Hopped beer was imported to England from the Netherlands as early as 1400 in Winchester, and hops were being planted on the island by 1428. The popularity of hops was at first mixed. The Brewers' Company of London went so far as to state, no hops, herbs, or other like thing be put into any ale or liquor whereof ale shall be made, but only liquor, water, malt, and yeast. However, by the 16th century, ale had come to refer to any strong beer, and all ales and beers were hopped, giving rise to the verse noted by the antiquary John Aubrey. Greeks, heresy, turkey cocks, and beer came into England all in a year. The year, according to Aubrey, was the 15th of Henry VIII, the year 1524. In 1516, William IV, Duke of Bavaria, adopted the Reinheitsgebot, purity law, perhaps the oldest food regulation still in use through the 20th century. The Reinheitsgebot passed formally from German law in 1987. The Gebot ordered that the ingredients of beer be restricted to water, barley, and hops. Yeast was added to the list after Louis Pasteur's discovery in 1857. The Bavarian law was applied throughout Germany as part of the 1871 German unification as the German Empire under Otto von Bismarck and has since been updated to reflect modern trends in beer brewing. History of beer in Germany. Beer is a major part of German culture. German beer is brewed according to the Reinheitsgebot, purity decree, sometimes called the German Beer Purity Law, a regulation concerning the production of beer in Germany. Over the centuries, allowed ingredients were modestly expanded, but this was a highly regulated process that permitted water, barley, and hops, which had to be added only while the wort was boiling. After its discovery, yeast became the fourth legal ingredient. For top fermenting beers, the use of sugar is also permitted. The Ringians point to a document which states the ingredients of beer as water, hops, and barley only, and was written in 1434 in Weissensee, Thuringia. 
It was discovered in the medieval Wannenberg near Erfurt in 1999. Before its official repeal in 1987, it was the oldest food quality regulation in the world. It permits only water, hops, and malt as ingredients and stipulates that beers not exclusively using barley malt, such as wheat beer, must be top fermented. Top fermentation is a violent alcoholic process at a temperature of 14 to 30 degrees Celsius, during which the yeast cells are carried to the top of the fermenting liquid used in the production of such liquors as ale, porter, and wines of high alcohol content and in distilling. Bottom fermentation is a process using yeast strains that work effectively at lower temperatures, 5 to 10 degrees Celsius, 41 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit, causing the yeast to work less vigorously and create carbon dioxide more slowly. This results in less turbulence in the beer and yeast precipitating early in its life cycle. Bottom fermentation is usually associated with lager yeasts. The term bottom fermentation was first used in Bavaria in 1420. Traditional beers of the time were ales. The ales warm 17 Celsius to 25 Celsius or 63 Fahrenheit to 77 Fahrenheit and turbulent top fermentation carry the yeast to the foam on top of the beer where it often formed a thick mat and was harvested and used to start the next batch. Brewers in Bavaria, however, found it advantageous to attempt fermentation and storage in cool caves at the foothills of the Alps, where it was possible to ferment beer even in summertime. Until this development, warm weather meant that brewing had to cease, as bacteria overwhelmed the yeast in warm fermentations. In the caves, a different yeast started to emerge, a yeast that could ferment at cold temperatures, that is, temperatures at which spoilage bacteria struggled. Oktoberfest. The St. Francis and the Americas Project attended and documented the 2017 Oktoberfest in Munich, Germany. Oktoberfest is the world's largest Volksfest, that is, both a beer festival and a fun fair for the Volk. The German noun Volk translates to people in the sense of a people as an ethnic group or nation. In German, there is Volksziel, national soul, and Volkswagen, the people's car. Volk is the cognate of English folk and also overlaps in the usage of the latter, as in Volksmusik, folk music, Volksglaub, folk belief. Compounds in which Volk translate to populace or nation include Voxenscheid, plebiscite, literally decision of or by the people, and Volkerbund, League of Nations. The word folklore, coined in 1846 by William J. Toms as an Anglo-Saxonism, revived folk in a modern sense of the common people whose culture is handed down orally, and opened up a flood of compound formations. For example, folk art, 1921, folk hero, 1899, folk medicine, 1898, folk tale, 1891, folk song, 1847, folk music, 1889, and folk dance, 1912. Oktoberfest is held annually in Munich, Bavaria, originally a sovereign country, now a federal state of Germany. The Oktoberfest 
runs from mid or late September to the first weekend in October, with more than six million people from around the world attending the event every year. The Oktoberfest is an important part of Bavarian culture, having been held since the year 1810. Other cities across the world also hold Oktoberfest celebrations that are modeled after the original Munich event. In Arizona, there is an Oktoberfest in Phoenix, Tempe, Flagstaff, Four Peaks, and elsewhere around the state. During the Munich event, large quantities of Oktoberfest beer are consumed. During the 16-day festival in 2013, for example, 7.7 million liters were consumed. Visitors also enjoy numerous attractions such as amusement rides, side stalls, and games. Types of beers. There are many, many types of German beer of a number of main sorts. These include wheat beers. They can be filtered or unfiltered. Weizenbier and Weissbier are the standard German names for wheat beer. Weizen is German for wheat, and Weiss is German for white. Berliner Weiss is a pale, very sour wheat beer brewed in Berlin. Hefeweizen is an unfiltered wheat beer. Hefe is German for yeast. Pale beers include Marzen at Oktoberfest, served in the traditional one liter Maas. Marzen are medium body, malty lagers that come in pale, amber, and dark varieties. This is the type of beer traditionally served at the Munich Oktoberfest. Pilsener is a pale lager with a light body and a more prominent hop character. It is by far the most popular style with around two-thirds of the market. Dark beers include Altbier, a top fermented lager beer. Bach is a heavy bodied, bittersweet lager that uses dark colored malts. Doppelbach is even stronger, a full bodied lager that uses dark colored malts. Dunkel is another dark lager which comes in two main varieties the Swedish malty Munich style and the drier hoppy Franconian style. Keller beer is a type of unfiltered beer that is conditioned in a similar manner to cask ales. Strength and color will vary. The Keller beer typically is neither clarified nor pasteurized. It can be either top or bottom fermented. The term Keller beer literally translates as cellar beer, referring to its cool lagering temperatures. Its recipe probably dates to the Middle Ages. In comparison with most of today's filtered and pasteurized lagers, Keller beer contains more of its original brewing yeast as well as vitamins held in suspension. As a result, it is distinctly cloudy and is described by German producers as Naturtrub, naturally cloudy. Keller beer and its related form, Zweikel beer, are often served directly from the barrel, for example, in a beer garden, but may be bottled as well. Since these beers do not undergo pasteurization, they are rather perishable. Thus, it is best to drink them as fresh as possible. Zweikel beer was originally a sample amount of beer taken from a brewery boss from the barrel with the help of a special pipe called a Zweikelhahn. Zweikel beers are unfiltered lagers like Keller beer, although with a slightly different conditioning process, which gives the lager more carbonation. Zweikel beers tend to be younger, lower in alcohol, 
and less hoppy than Keller beers. In total, there are approximately 1,300 breweries in Germany, producing over 5,000 brands of beer. The highest density of breweries in the world is found in Aufsis, near the city of Bamberg, in the Franconia region of Bavaria, with four breweries and only 1,352 citizens. The Benedictine Abbey Weihheisenstephan Brewery, established in 725, is reputedly the oldest existing brewery in the world, brewing since 1040. Brands and breweries. While the beer market is weaker but more centralized in northern Germany, southern Germany has many smaller local breweries. Almost half of all German breweries are in Bavaria, where the seven main breweries produce 158 million gallons. In total, there are approximately 1,300 breweries in Germany producing over 5,000 brands of beer. There is a variety of glasswares for the serving of the millions of liters of beer. One of the most intriguing is the beer boot, Bierstiefel in German. They have over a century of history and culture behind them. It is commonly believed that a general somewhere promised his troops to drink beer from his boot if they were successful in battle. When the troops prevailed, the general had a glassmaker fashion a boot from glass to fulfill his promise without tasting his own feet and to avoid spoiling the beer in his leather boot. Since then, soldiers have enjoyed toasting to their victories with a beer boot. At gatherings in Germany, Austria, and Switzerland, beer boots are often passed among the guests for a festive drinking challenge. Since the movie Beer Fest appeared in 2006, beer boots have become increasingly popular in the United States. Glass beer boots are either manufactured using a mold or from mouth-blown glass by skilled artisans. In Germany, beer boots usually contain between two and four liters and are passed from one guest at the table to the next one clockwise. When almost reaching the bottom of the boot, it suddenly starts bubbling. By some accounts, the drinker who caused the bubbling has to order the next boot. There are also boots known with six and eight liters. Brewing monks, especially Franciscans. There is a long historical connection between monasteries and finely crafted beer. In the sixth century, Benedict of Nursa created the rule of Saint Benedict. In the rule, Benedict required monks to earn their own living through craftsmanship. While some monasteries took up gardening, beekeeping, and cheese making, some monks made their living brewing beer. Today, monasteries are credited with the creation of some of the most loved beers on today's market. The most famous of these monasteries are the Trappist breweries. St. Sixtus Abbey in Belgium is said to make the best beer in the entire world. However, most of these famous brews can only be found in Europe. Here are four outstanding beers offered by Catholic monks and friars.